Hey guys, uh, my name is Matt Beaver. I'm the head strength and conditioning coach at Vertigris High School uh, in Vertigris, Oklahoma. Uh, check out the podcast uh, here with here with my man, um, and uh, you know we we talk about all kinds of stuff: life, sports, um, coaching, teaching, inspiring, motivating. What it is to be an American? What it is to lead? What that looks like? Okay, so uh, lots of good stuff. So. Hop on here, check it out. Make sure you subscribe, follow, and uh, Boomer Sooner. I had to get that in there. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. I'm gonna stand. I won't be seated. Wanna hold my head up high and stay undefeated. To find any moments on this part. Cause I'm American by the grace of my good. God. Coach Beaver, welcome to the podcast. Thank Thanks for, for driving me. all the way down here from Vertigris. Vertigris. Oklahoma. Yes. yes, sir. Strength and conditioning coach. Yes, sir. Is that at the high school level? Yes, sir. And I work with some junior high, too. So, okay. Yeah. yeah, before we take a deep dive into that, mm-hmm. got something for you. Okay. Got your gift, man. Awesome. My man, I added my collection. I already got the hoodie, you know. I work yeah. out in that thing all the time. <laughs> Add this to the coffee mug collection. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Red Fridays. Red Fridays. Remember everyone deployed. I, I love it. Every time. Yeah, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. Absolutely, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. For sure. For sure. So, okay. So, strength conditioning coach. Mm-hmm. Pretty high intensity, I would imagine. Uh, every day, yeah. I, I see your tweets. That's how we met off of Twitter. It or is. X. Yeah. So, how do you start your mornings? So I start my mornings with junior high. It's first period. So we have we, uh, we, we have seven period days, and they're about 50 minutes long. So I get about, you know, once they get changed in there, take roll, I get about 40 minutes after, you know, we get our warm-up done. So it's it's very fast, intense, you yeah. know. Um, not necessarily a perfect world in that, in, in that way. That's why summer I can, you know, I save as my peak phase, if you mm-hmm. will, because I have more time with them. Um, you know, the world's not always perfect as we know it. So as much as we want it to be, yeah, right? but it's not. So, <clears throat> you know, and that's one of the fun dynamics with what I do is you might have this wonderful plan A that just falls flat on its face and you got to be able to think on your feet a little bit and, yeah. you know, adapt. And so, um, you know, it makes it challenging, but, um, you know, it's, you know, it's cool. It's at, it's at my alma mater where I graduated from that I'm the first strength and conditioning coach in the school's history. So nice. So that's pretty cool. You know, previously I was at Tulsa Will Rogers, mm-hmm. so I was in TPS and very thankful for my time there. Um, but it's kind of, it's kind of two, you know, different, you know, different, different worlds, you know, if you will, going from a big public school system, mm-hmm. you know, where you got nine different high schools, you know, to your one. So, yeah. um, and it's also neat in the sense that like my, my superintendent was my high school principal when I was there, and then my principal was my high school football coach. So oh wow! Still, the, you know, the same community that raised me, and um, so it's 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 an honor and a privilege to be back there and and being able to do what I'm doing now. So that's awesome. It's exciting. So you're growing up, and now you're giving back to uh, yeah. who raised you. No. Yeah. No, I love that man. Yeah, work out in the morning. You look like you've been around three hundred, three fifty in my. Ah, uh, I mean not not uh <laughs> not enough, but uh, you know you know being you know my daughter's four, so yeah. that's been another another thing. So getting used to to all that, and so I don't train as much as I um you know would like to, but I'm also getting older, so mm-hmm. there's that. Um, you know, <laughs> there's that as well. Got two knee surgeries on this right knee, so. You know, you got to adapt, but you know that's mm-hmm. that's one thing you learn to do with you know doing what I do, and I love it. And it's and actually going through my first knee surgery was kind of what um, unlocked my passion for what I do today. Mm-hmm. So, and then my high school basketball coach outside of my dad was, you know, the man that made the biggest impact on my life. So, um, you know, I was real overweight when I was younger, and. Um, um, I actually stopped playing football in eighth grade um, for some personal reasons and went to basketball. Basketball was always harder for me. It was more of a challenge. I had to work harder at it. Um, and he looked me straight in the eye. He was like, you know, because I went into his office. I was like, Coach, I'm all yours, man, you know. And I tell a story all the time because it just it was such a changing of the trajectory of my life just yeah. in this one moment. 
And I was overweight. I was probably 5'9", 250 in the eighth grade. Mm. I mean, that's not a basketball body, you yeah. know, at all. So um, <laughs> I was a heck of a right guard, though, you know. But um, and he's like, shut the door, you know. <laughs> so he's like, pull up a chair. I was like, okay. And so I do. And he's like, son, look, you might be one of the best shooters of the basketball I've ever seen. But if you can't run up and down the floor for me, I mean, I don't, I don't really know what to tell you. Mm. And he said, now, but he didn't just say that and then kick me out of his office. You know, he's like, but if you're willing to do the work, I'll help you. I said, well, I'm willing to do the work, coach. And so he's like, all right, pull up a chair. So I did. And we sat down and made a plan and I changed my eating habits. I changed a lot of my lifestyle and I just went and ran. I wanted to get all the bad weight off first. And, and I did. And I hit my growth spurt that summer, which was nice. And I left in eighth grade about five nine, two fifty ish, maybe even two sixty. Um, came back at six two one ninety five. So it was wow. a crazy transformation, and then uh, the rest was history. And my sophomore year, we, because you know, up until let's see, the first graduating class in Vertigris was in ninety. Oh, they're gonna kill me if I get this wrong. But it was a K through eight school forever, sure. and you had to go to Catoosa mm-hmm. or Claremore. So the first, I was like the, the first graduating class I know was 1999. So I was like this, you know, I graduated in 05. So I was the sixth class out of there. So I was on the first state tournament basketball team in 04. And we lost to Oklahoma Christian and the Griffin brothers. So Taylor, mm. Taylor and Blake, yeah, um, you know, and they were great. You know, they're you know, phenomenal players. And then, um, you know, so just, and just to see the growth of that district now, and the facilities and just all the things that have happened has just been really has been really neat. And like I said, to you know, be able to come back and now be the first in school history and all that. It's just it's it's a very full circle. Yeah. And then my daughter's gonna go to school there. She's gonna start pre K four there next year. Nice. So I'm gonna get to be there with her. So it's it's nice bringing some stability and, and you know, it's 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 just great to be a part of of that of that district again and that and that community because it's a real sense of community yeah. at Vertigris, which is really neat as well i love so, that man yeah we got the american flag in the background what's it mean to be an american to you you know we still pledge the pledge the flag every morning eight fifteen sharp you awesome. know and that's a whole not, you know it's it's i mean it's everything to me you know i mean you're you know you're born here you're raised here it's uh, you know you're so passionate about that and right there and and you know, I remember growing up, we, that was just normal. And the fact that that's becoming less and less in schools and things is very sad to me. Um, mm. But as far as to be an American to me, is just to help each other, mm. you know, to help each other, to help your brother, to help your sister, to, and look at each other that way. Yeah. Not as my enemy or we're different. So let's, let's, you know, just all these divisions that mm. are out there now, you know, um, that are, you know, in my opinion, kind of being forced down our throats a lot, you know, b- via the media, via social media, via mm-hmm. all these things and, um, you know, versus let's help each other. Yeah. Let's come together. Let's not divide. It's, yeah. you know, let's, let's, let, you know, and, and there's so much division anymore. It's very, you know, used to, it's like, there's a couple things now. It's like, we just creating things. Um, and it's just, it's very sad to see to me in that way. Um, it's so different. You know, I was thinking that about that on my way down here. Like, just when I was in high school versus now, and the mm. distractions these kids deal with that we didn't have to deal with. And we had some, but not, yeah. not to the level it is today. And, uh, I mean, even like with, you know, like vaccinated, unvaccinated. Like, it's just all these things that, like, cre- you know, it's like, oh, well, you're, it's like, let's, okay. Okay, you might feel that, and that's great. Okay, right. a lot of you know good things come from hard conversations. Yeah, but it's like we're not willing, a lot of people don't want to have those. You know, my dad used to always tell me, you know, when he died be five years ago in July, um, he's like, son, you know, conversation you may not want to have is the one you probably need to have. Mm. You know, and he said that to me a lot, and that's one of the things. You know, he's, there's a lot of things he said to me that have stuck with me over the years, but. You know, and good things can come from conflict, can come from differing opinions and just talking about it, like, yeah. but without getting offended and without getting, and then hating the person because they think differently, like, okay, well, they think differently. So, you know, doesn't yeah. mean we have to hate each other. So, 
you know, I don't know. I just, it's, it'd be nice to see, you know, help the person on the side of the road, help the, you know, I just, it's just, you still see it, mm-hmm. but it's like, it'd be nice to see more of it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I don't know. It's, it's very, it's a very interesting time right now. Mm-hmm. One that, uh, you know, we'll see what happens here in uh, November, but that's a whole nother conversation. So <laughs> anyway, but, but, um, you know, and then growing up, honestly, you know, you, yeah, you pay attention, but you know, as you get older, you got to pay more and more attention, obviously to mm. the political atmosphere and what's going on and how it affects you and your kids and all that. Now being a parent, it brings a whole new perspective to all that. And, you know, what's my daughter going to have to deal with, you know, what's, you know, and then fighting for that. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, um, so, um, you know, and everything I do, every decision I make, every, you know, it's, how does, how does it affect Baker? You know, what, um, you know, she's, she's, she's everything to me. And once you're a parent, it just brings a whole new perspective to life in general. So, and I know yeah. you, you're about to <laughs> uh, enter that, enter that world yourself, yeah, aren't you? I am. I am. Speaking of 815 Sharp. Every morning when I wake up, I put my hand on her stomach, and I do say the Pledge of Allegiance so Champ can hear. And when he does, he actually kicks, moves around. So really? it's actually pretty neat. Awesome. Yeah. So That's awesome. Yeah. That that happens every morning. That's awesome. Yeah. Then I speak a little bit in the knees to him. He still kicks me. like He doesn't understand what I'm saying, but he will soon. Yeah. Yeah. He will. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Let, let's, let's talk about your knee injuries first. Mm-hmm. Let's go from there. What was your first knee injury? Uh, so I blew my, my ACL, MCL. LCL my meniscus so you could literally pull my tib fib apart from my femur yeah um so it happened in a uh, AU tournament um uh, it was our last tournament of the summer so it'll be my junior summer going into my senior year and um uh, just freak deal I mean it's kind of how you get rolled up in football essentially I went up I grabbed a board off the front end of a one-on-one mm-hmm. and I came down and I was you know, just trying to find my point guard on an outlet pass, and this big dude guy that I was guarding, I guess, rolled his ankle. This is way back before you had huddle, and, you know, it was VHS still back mm-hmm. then, so there's no, like, film of it, but somehow he falls from, I swear to this day, it was a lane violation. So he goes in early. I hit him with a forearm. He gets pinballed back, I guess, somehow rolls that inside ankle and just, oh, and he was probably six seven, two fifty, and he's a big old boy. It wasn't mm. like a guard; it was their center. And it just—I thought I—I I thought I broke my leg. Like I thought it stabbed my femur. I mean, it just like, sounded like a shotgun, and um, happened right in the middle of the paint, and just felt somebody had a blowtorch in my knee. Just you know, and it was blood filling my knee up, is what it was. And so I—I I, I actually army crawled all the way to half court because I just, just reaction and um our center came over there and i don't remember doing this but he's like man you all right you all right he said i reached up and grabbed his hand i was like i did i'm good <laughs> he's like I, he goes i finally had he goes he goes you're gonna break my hand and so by the time i got to the to the uh, sideline i mean it was the size oh. of a football and so the next morning i went to i went to eoc and got it drained and it took two and a half epidural needles to get all the fluid off before he could even test it before he could even you know i because i had so much fluid when it was straight i couldn't even i I couldn't even move it oh like i could i couldn't so they had to get all that off and then he does the anterior posterior drawer test and he goes okay and my mom was actually sitting in the corner she throws up in the trash can um you know so and then i end up going to get it repaired by tony cruz um, from Southwest Orthopedic in Oklahoma City, who has done a lot of work for OU, yep. and um, so and it was my senior year, and I don't know if you're familiar with a, a kid named Rodney Clark. That's familiar, but um, he's the state scoring leader in the history of Oklahoma high school basketball. Okay, that's career, and just wow. short of four thousand points. Yeah, dang. So my junior year, we go. Through the consolation bracket, and it's in basketball, obviously, um, to get to state. And we're the eight seed. So we play the one seed. We get Oklahoma Christian, and 
we'd never played in a, you know in an arena like that all that space behind the basket you know and you didn't get a practice so her first half was just a it was rough uh they ended up beating us i think 13 or 14 i think it was 56 to 42 if i remember correctly so i wanted that game like i wanted that rematch like that's all i wanted cuz i knew if we could beat them that's the only team in my mind that Maybe we couldn't beat. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, we had to really play our best game against to, you know, to beat. But if we beat him, I knew we were going to win it all, like, yeah. type thing. So, that's all. I mean, I was working with Lee Mayberry one-on-one, you know, on Saturday mornings. I mean, I was working my tail off. And that summer, so, but that junior year, Rodney's originally from Arkansas, but he was living in uh, Dennis, I think Dennison, Texas, so northern Texas. Mm-hmm. And his uncle was looking, Rodney was a 2B freshman, and his uncle was who ended up being our head coach. They happened to see us play that game against Oklahoma Christian. And so we were only losing one off of our starting five, you know, in his mind, you know, insert Rodney, and like, <laughs> this is a good deal here, you know. So he ends up being our coach, and so that summer we were, you know, we were in a ton of team camps trying to get chemistry and all that stuff, and we were just hammering people i mean i was like we are gonna be tough and then knee and they still went 25 and three and went to the semi they were the three seed that year in the state tournament and this started a run for Mm -hmm. vertigris basketball like a big run yeah um and so uh but they shot 20 percent from the floor that game we're up at half Shooting 20%. Wow. You know, yeah. And uh, <laughs> end up losing by eight or nine or 10 or something. But uh, but Rodney ended up winning one his senior year in 07, 08. And then they won another one in 15, 16 with Brewster Peacock and Leif Payne. And, and uh, Leif's actually now, it's pretty cool because my office is right next to the head basketball, boys basketball coach's office. And um, Leif Payne, his dad's our superintendent, Mike Payne. And so now Leif's back as an assistant coach in basketball, and you know I'm back strength conditioning. My high school quarterback Andrew Sherman is an assistant baseball coach. So wow. like we're kind of bringing back some of the you know from yeah. from those early days, and so that's you know that's also cool as well. But um, so yeah, then I still tried to go play college ball, JUCO, and just. I remember walking back one night to my dorm with ice on the front and back of both my knees, just thinking to myself, like, dude, like, (laughs) Mm. it's not worth all that. Just go, like, you can get through school with your head, like, with your brain, like, it's not worth all this, like, and so, and I'm not a quitter, you can't, you couldn't pay me to quit, so it was really hard for me to walk into my head coach's office and be like, coach, I, you know, but he knew, and he was like, I, he goes, I know it's hard for you, but I think you're making a good choice. And yeah. So I transferred to UCO. I was at NOC in Tonkawa. So okay. I'm in Tonkawa, Oklahoma. Yeah. But it was fun. I mean, you had get dudes there from California. Because, I mean, it was, a, it was a D1 Juco. I mean, you're in there with mm-hmm. Redlands and, you know, some squads. And yeah. so it was a very competitive league, and we had, we had a good team. But So I transferred to UCO, got into – it was uh, kinesiology is what it was called – I got my, my bachelor's in exercise science. Um, it was called kinesiology at UCO. I spent two and a half years there. And then um, I got a chance to go to East Central University in Ada mm-hmm. and be and get involved with their strength and conditioning program because that's the path I was looking at taking. And um, got a great opportunity there. Very, very thankful for that. Learned a ton. Um, so got my degree from there. And, and like I said, it's called exercise science there. Um, and then my dad, I went and visited Missouri, uh, for a week, uh, hung out with their staff when they had like Jeremy Macklin and Chase Daniel and, you know, wow. back when they yeah. were, you know, uh, you know, really, 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 I mean, I saw Macklin run like a four, three, two in person, uh, Sean, I don't know if it's Weatherspoon or Witherspoon. So forgive me if I mispronounce that, but, uh, he's the one who laid that hit on RG three. On the sideline, oh. kind of, you know, yeah. it was a kind of a career ender for RG three there. But I saw him break the school squat record at like seven fifty as a linebacker. And it was pretty crazy to see that Dang. kind of stuff in person. Yeah, and so seeing that stuff, well, I was just like, yeah, this is what I want to do. Like, yeah. you know. And then I went to TCU for 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 a few days. I got to meet 
uh, LT. Oh Danny yeah, Tomlinson, great yeah. guy. Uh, got I mean, I sat and I mean, Gary Patterson, great man. I mean, he took forty five. He didn't have to talk to me, you know, like yeah. he didn't have to, but he he took about forty five minutes to an hour and just sat with me in his office and talked about life. And wow, I've always had respect for him just because, like I said, he didn't have to do that. Yeah, but great, you know, great guy. I've always liked Gary Patterson, but so I was kind of looking at. Going to Columbia, going to Fort Worth, you know, and then my dad has a massive heart attack. Mm. I mean, massive. And so I had to move back home and help out with the family business and kind of put all that stuff on hold. And that's an industry that if once you kind of get out of that, you know, circle, it's really tough to you know, end up being a 10 year deal with my dad, you know. So he got through his heart and uh, had a couple good years of quality of life and then stage three lung cancer. Mm. So, you know, he was, I mean, he played 36 holes of golf the day before he had his heart attack, too, in Oklahoma, you know, summer heat. So, hmm. and then just massive heart attack, has to have open heart surgery. And so, um, then I just got into teaching as a teaching assistant at first. I didn't have, I hadn't passed my state test to be a certified teacher yet. Of course, I have my degree, but um, was just kind of looking for a career path at that point. And I guess it had kind of taken a detour and, you know, realized I'd, I liked it. I liked having that level of impact that I felt like I could have mm -hmm. on the youth. And I thought, what better spot to impact the future of our work than right here? Yeah. Um, at the foundational level, like what, you know, this is awesome. You know, so I was like, let me go take these tests and let me get to where I can make enough money to, you know, to do this. And so, you know, four, four tests later and, couple certifications later and here I am. So I'm going in year 11 now and wow. You know, working away from a middle school in TPS to I got an opportunity to go to Rogers and be, a, you know, their their first strength coach there and mm -hmm. kind of get that program turned around. I don't know, if, you know, they when I took that job, they hadn't won a game and they hadn't won a football game in 5 years. They were 0 and 50. And so by year I don't really count the COVID year because it's just it was mm -hmm. such a mess. I didn't get, I didn't even get an off season with them because I couldn't do anything in person. Yeah, and that you know I took the job in January of twenty. My daughter's born. Well, my dad dies July of nineteen. Okay, I start at Rogers January of twenty. Okay, my daughter's born February of twenty. COVID hits March of twenty. Yeah, so it was just like yeah, it was wow. just a crazy. You know, I really didn't have time to grieve my dad. I mean, I did, but I didn't, you know, because I didn't have time to sit there and feel sorry for myself. Not that I wanted to, but, you know, because I had a daughter on the way. Mm. So it was kind of with death comes life type thing. And I just wish they would have got a picture together. But, you know, it is what it is. He knew she was on the way. He knew I was at a good place in my life and um, happy with what I was doing yeah. and, and making enough money to be self-sufficient. And so that was my goal, you know, because yeah. I knew, I mean, he was 42 years old when I was born. So he was... I got a half brother who's 17 years older than I am. Oh, wow. Yeah. So Brad's, and I mean, he's my brother. I don't, but technically, sure. you know, but, uh, so yeah, dad was 42 when I was born. So, and he smoked cigarette and he's born 1945 when you didn't know that, you know, cigarettes and whiskey were bad for you, but <laughs> you know, they're not very, very, uh, you know, good, good for the health in the long term. So I knew the cigarettes would get him and they did. Yeah. You know, so, but, um, you know, it just, um, it was a crazy, like I said, crazy six month span there, but, you know, tough times, you know, make tough people. So, mm -hmm. you know, and then, um, but like I said, with what I do, it's, I'm very passionate about it. It doesn't feel like work to me. Right. Ever. Cause I love it. Yeah. So, you know, and it's turned into, you know, getting it, getting the opportunity that I got at Vertigris and, couldn't be happier, man. Couldn't That's happier. awesome. That's just, awesome, just, Coach. Just ready. You know, now we're getting ready for our Summer Pride program. And she got a bunch of uh, equipment in the other day from Rogue. It's like a, you know, Christmas and April thing for me. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, we're gearing up and getting ready to go and see seeing what we can accomplish this year. So Yeah. What what changes have you seen with students from your all your years of experience of teaching? Mm-hmm. So I think it's like 11 years. Yeah, I'm going into year 11. Yeah, yeah. so what was it, what's the change you see in, in the students and then the student athletes? You know, um, I've been in, you know, you know, two, two, 
two school districts now that are that are different. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of similarities, but there's differences, obviously, and that's going to be the case when you hypothetically move from one school district to another. Um, I've worked with a lot of different coaches, you know, teachers and 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 things, and you know, back to me, you know, saying about you know the just the distractions that these kids have, mm. and I tell them this all the time, and they look at me like. Almost like, what do you mean by that? You know, and I'm like, if I grew up with y'all today, I would pass y'all up so fast because I, I wouldn't let it distract me. Mm. Like, I'm not saying don't be a kid. I'm not saying don't have fun. Don't, but handle your business first, Mm. then go have fun. Yeah. That's like, that's life. Like you got to do that anyway. Nobody's like, you want to have fun in life. We all do. But we got to we gotta handle our responsibilities first. And if you'll just have that mentality, like, that'll bode well for you. Mm-hmm. And the quicker you can learn that, the better off you're going to be. So, you know, I tell them that all the time. All the time. And they get so tired of it. But, you know, I, it, it'll echo. And that's what sure. I want. I want it to echo. You know, but the kids, you just get such a variety anymore of... Um, You know, because like, you know, when I was coming, you know, cell phones didn't come out till I was 16, 17. And of course, there was no texting. There was no video. There was no, you know, um, social media wasn't really a thing. I mean, because when Facebook came out originally, you had to be in college or have a .edu email address to even have a Facebook account. Mm -hmm. They didn't open it up to everybody till a couple years, you know, later or whatever. So, you know... (sighs) It's hard for them, and I understand that. But at the same time, you've got to have self-discipline. You've got to have a work ethic. You've got to have those things, and you've got to have the ability to be like, okay, i got to just put my phone away. Like, And those things are attached to these kids, and it's like cutting teeth sometimes to get them to, you know, it's like just it'll be fine for an hour. Leave it in your locker. It'll be okay, you know. But then you'll get, you know, you'll get – um you know, parents that aren't happy that you made them put it in their locker. Mm. And it's like, you know, so it's a tough dynamic. There's, it, you know, it's a tough line to establish because if kids don't, and, and a lot of people will disagree with this, but if they don't like you, they're not going to learn. They're not going to learn from you. They're mm. not going to listen to you. If they don't have a level of, like and respect for you and that's the toughest line to tote as a teacher and coach Mm -hmm. is Mm -hmm. that like respect threshold it's hard because you can't you know a lot of kids can't you know and 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 some can i'm not saying there's like none but hard coaching a butt chewing uh mm -mm, they can't take it like it 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 just you know you can tell it just they just shut down where like we grew up that was just normal yeah. That was just another day. Like, okay. Coach Yell, okay. Like, you know, and they might run home and tell, and then you got to have a meeting, and then it's like, wait, huh? Wait, what? <laughs> you know? Um, and then and then the polar opposite. The kids, you can coach hard and everything in between. Mm-hmm. So that's the ch- challenge of just the parity that you have. True. Of... And and that's one of the great responsibilities I think you have is you got to know what sh- how you can go with this kid versus how I can go with this kid yeah. and how I have to communicate, teach different learning styles all over the place. And you got to be able to adapt. And that's tough sometimes, you know, because you want to do this and do it your way. And yeah. that's all well and good. But sometimes, like I so say, you got to be able to think on your feet. And maybe throw that plan A up, throw it in the trash, and mm-hmm. go to plan B, so to speak. So, yeah. Anyway. I want to touch base on your coach in eighth grade. You're 5'9", pressing 250 pounds. He had a hard conversation. You're mm-hmm. a great shooter, but, man, you can't get up and down the court. How did you take that? Did you go home and tell your mom, your dad, that no, coach was mean? because he was right. Yeah. And I knew that. And that's sometimes with kids today, like, like I like I knew he was right. He was one hundred percent right. But and I say this to people all the time when I tell that story. That's why that's like I said, outside of my father, his name's John Coons. He's 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 the head girls coach at Kiefer today. 
he had the biggest impact on my life outside of my dad, as far as a male, you know, role model figure. Mm-hmm. And that's what he's the reason that I do. Cause he, he, he helped take a very over, you know, I was overweight. I was not healthy. I, I didn't eat what I was bad and made me realize like just in that moment that if you want to go play and you want to compete and you want to do these things, I know you want to do, you're going to have to do this mm. and I'll help you. I'll, I'll be here for you along the way, you know, with you, but y- y- you got to do this. Yeah. And so, you know, he taught me so much just in that moment in so many different ways. It's just, when I look back on it, it's wild to me because it just changed the, you know, I don't, if that didn't happen, you know, maybe that's yeah. just, that's the way it felt to me and still does to this day. So that's like, you know, like I said, that's what I, and he's a large reason as to why I do what I do today because, you know, and then going through my knee and going through the rehab process and just, you know, a lot like I love anatomy and just anatomical terms and speaking in those terms and teaching, like, I love that stuff. Like I'll, I'll totally, you know, kind of nerd out on stuff like that. Like, like I love it. And uh, so it kind of unlocked all that for me. It kind of opened that door for me and now it's become my career mm-hmm. and if you would have told that to the 5'8 250 pound me I would have laughed at you because yeah. it was such a far fetched idea at that point in my life yeah. so but you know and now I you know I hope I can continue to you know train and be healthy you know and cuz now it's not my motivations have completely changed you know used to you know, it was a little more cosmetic and, um, you know, um, for the ladies, you know, or whatever it was for, you know, what, mm-hmm. but now it's for, you know, truly to be healthy, to feel good, uh, to be able to, you know, go and play with my daughter for hours on end without, mm-hmm. you know, getting tired or, you know, running around just whatever, you know, now it's about protecting her and being, and being around for as long as I can, you know, for her. Mm-hmm. And so now that's my motivation when I go train as opposed to, you know, probably some not as good reasons back then (laughs) so have you ever had to have a hard conversation with any of your student athletes oh yeah yeah oh yeah oh yeah yeah but once again it goes back to knowing how you can talk to them sure you know knowing what they respond to and some kids like i said there's still kids that you can you know be intense with and have those more in their face conversations Versus the kids you need to shut the door and nobody around and sit him down and calm boy. You know, it's mm-hmm. just, um, but, oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And especially with what I do when it comes to developing them from an athletic standpoint. Like, yeah, you got to look at them and say, you're not good at this. Yeah. Like, sorry, but you're not. Yeah. Here's how we're going to get better at it. Mm-hmm. Okay. But you've got to get better here. Mm-hmm. You're not, you know. You're good here. We're not good here. Strengths, weaknesses. Let's bring our. Let's turn our weaknesses into strengths. Because typically, they're naturally predisposed to their strengths. They're, those yeah. are going to be strengths. Like those are naturally going to always be strengths for you. Where these weaknesses, we gotta we gotta work more over here. Yeah. Um. You know, like you're a great shooter. Well, okay, that muscle memory is probably there. Let's work on our ball handling. Let's work on getting downhill to the basket, finishing at the rim, getting stronger in the weight room so we can finish through contact, you know? Mm. Let's work on getting bouncier. Let's work on, right? Because you're a great shooter already. You can walk in the gym right now and fill it up. So why are we going to work in an hour on that instead of going to work in an hour on something we're not very good at? Sure. You know, let's, and then kids get overworked, in my opinion, you know? Because you got so much summer stuff that goes on now, which I'm not, I'm not against it. That's not what I'm saying. But more is not necessarily better mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, competing, you got to love to compete, obviously. I mean, life's a competition. But, you know, I'll hear some of these kids' schedules sometimes. And I know it's not, you can't, it's not a perfect world all the time. And I get that. And sometimes schedules are going to overlap from maybe you got a team camp and then you got your summer team that's ended up. I get it. But sometimes these kids tell me their schedules, and I'm just like, mm-hmm. "How? What? I'm like, how do you even recover from day to day? Like, yeah. it's just it's wild, you know. Because at the end of the day, these kids they gotta you gotta sleep, you gotta mm-hmm. eat, you gotta. I mean, 
you know, and then the nutrition aspect of it. Oh boy. That's a whole nother conversation <laughs> just because it's like, you know, I make the analogy to them all the time. Like trying to, <laughs> Trying to train and get bigger, faster, stronger on some hot Cheetos and a Red Bull <laughs> is like trying to go to, you know, making a cross country road trip on a quarter tank of gas. Like it's just not going to work ever. Right. <laughs> right. Ever. Nope. And so, you know, I do like I'll hand write them meal plans mm-hmm. and I don't call it a diet because it's not, we're not, you're an athlete. Mm-hmm. You are burning your caloric outputs high. So let's just eat good food, but we got to be consistent in it. You know, it's, yeah. it's, all that's a battle of consistency. Like, you know, I mean, you work out and train and it's, and you're consistent. It's solid. You yeah. know, it goes, it goes away a whole lot quicker than you get it. Unfortunately, <laughs> real quick. Right. Whoever decided that rule, like we need to talk, but yeah, no, but for real, like, no, cause it does though. You know, it, um, you can take seven to 10 days off It might, you know, but then after that, it's going to start, mm-hmm. it's going to start declining, sure. you know? Um, and I tell them that all the time, too. It's a battle of consistency. There is no secret to this, you know, outside. And just eat good, train, sleep. Don't put things in your body that are bad for you. And just, it'll happen. Yeah. But you've got to be consistent. And you don't get your time back. I tell them that all the time, too. You, you know, you can't get to your senior year and go, hey, I don't know. Yeah. Can I go back to, uh, you know, like, into my freshman year or, you know, and, Get a do over? Can I? Because I, you know, because I didn't work hard. Like, no, you don't. That's not an option. Right. They say, "Here's your diploma. See ya." Like, you know, you know. Good luck in the, good luck in the future. And I mean, that's you don't get your time back. Yeah. Every day is an opportunity to get better, and either you're going to seize the opportunity to get better, and you're going to show up, you're going to work hard, or you're just going to be one of those go through the motions, you know, and you're going to get the result that you, you know, you're gonna you're gonna get out of it what you put into it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, life's a summation of the choices that we make. I like it. You have a strong mindset, a very good outlook on life and leadership. How would you describe leadership? What's your definition? Well, first, you got to lead by example, mm. first and foremost. I mean, if you, you, can, you can be, you know, give that, you know, you can bump the gums all day long, but um, you got to lead by example. Um, you know, some people are, not very vocal, but you know, as far as their vocal leadership, but um, and that's I think more of a personality thing, just you know, differ from individual to individual. But you got to lead by example, like with what I do. Like if I was out of shape and I didn't, you know, who what who what kids gonna listen to me? Like right. you know, I'm, oh, they're, they're not. I mean, they I mean they try me all the time. Oh, coach, I bet you can. I'm like, give it to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yes, I can. Get out of here. You know, so like the other day, they're like, how many reps can you do at 225? Cut, you know, and I'm like, I ain't warmed up and I'll hit 25. You're like, no, you won't. And I like 29. They're like, <laughs> you know, like, and I'm like, guys, like I've, I've been doing this. Like, just trust me. Okay. Yeah. Like, you know, so lead by example. Um, and just, you know, just be a good human being. Like, just, just be a good person, you know, be honest. Um, you know, I say this all the time too. I mean, your words, everything you mm-hmm. say, you're going to do it, do it. Yeah. I mean, just, you know, um, be, you know, be, be trustworthy, be, be kind, be willing to help others. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and that's, you know, you start, you know, talk about being a great teammate. Like, you know, it's not always about you. Right. You know, take yourself out of it. Try to look through another perspective, you know, try to, Think, well, what if I was that person? How would I feel? Mm-hmm. Instead of being so tunnel vision on what you want, what you need all the time, you know, yeah. look outside yourself, you know, try to try to help somebody. Try to have a servant mind, you yeah. know, a servant heart instead of a consuming heart all the time, right? Yeah. Um, you know, be, be a giver, you know, instead, instead of a taker all the time. Mm-hmm. So, but, because kids... You know, we're talking about kid. You know, if you want to relate it to kids, like they they want that, especially now, more than more so than maybe ever. As far you know, as far as in my experience, like they want that lead by example person. Mm-hmm. Like they want that. Um, you know, because like I said, they'll try you in a heartbeat. They'll try you. So, mm-hmm. but you know, to me, that's 
that's the first thing just is just simply lead by example um and then just be willing to do whatever it takes yeah and whatever it is i like it be willing to adapt be willing to think on your feet i like it yeah how do you deal with negativity in what sense like just in general in general you know the older i've gotten um I also just kind of laugh at it. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, and yeah, we, I guess, can we all get negative? I can sure. Um, and when I was younger, I guess I, um, that was a lesson I had to learn. Like, cause I was a really good golfer at a really young age. It's like, that's all my dad did. I mean, just, you know, so if I want to spend time with my dad, it was, I better learn how to play golf. Mm-hmm. And so, and I was real good, real, real early, but man, I'd lose my temper. Oh boy quick and that game taught me a lot mm. just about like you know my dad used to always tell me he's like son you're good enough like yeah you might have made four straight bogeys whatever he goes but you're good enough you might make five straight birdies mm. and you got to believe that and i you know and golf teach you a lot about life and i say that all the time because it's a whew, yeah golf's a grinder boy yeah and uh but just you know yeah, it could be a bad day. It could be a bad situation. It could be a bad, you know, but tough times make tough people, like I said earlier, mm-hmm. you know, and they do. So, but I don't want it in my life. I'll say that in a perfect world, but as we both know, it's not always perfect. Right. Um, you know, I've dealt with some things personally this year that have been, you know, you know, in a way it's been, well, I, yeah, it probably has been the hardest year of my life as far as just, things going on outside of work, you know, that you're trying to, you know, can't let it bleed over, obviously, you know, and uh, that's something that I've had to learn, like, just that you can (laughs) just know, you know, like, I don't have to do it. Like, I'm not dealing with your negativity because I don't have to. Mm. And learning, like, telling people that, like, straight up, like, listen, if you're going to be negative around me, I'm going to choose to not be around you. Yeah. Now, if it's somebody, say it's your friend or your whatever, don't necessarily want that, mm. but this is what I'm choosing. And I hope you can respect that. Yeah. But I don't want it around me because I don't want it affecting my mindset. Because yeah. especially with what I do, like I can't be in a negative headspace. Yeah. Ever. You know, I've always got to be in a positive, encouraging, intense mindset. Yeah. You know, and that's been something I've had to learn with shutting that off. When I come home and it's dad mode time, mm. you know, and now it's time to be a dad right. and it's time to give your daughter all your attention. You've been giving other kids your attention all day and that's, fu- that's all well and good. But now it's time to give your daughter the attention sure. that she deserves. And, you know, cause I'm one of the, you know, the, cause there for a while, it's hard for me to yeah. learn that I'd, I'd, I'd still be thinking about work and still working and still, you know, and, um, so that's been but I'm in a whole lot better spot um, now than than I was with that for sure. Yeah. So you know you live and you learn. Yep. So you're the encourager, obviously strength coach, coaching, teaching. You've got to be that positive role model, etc. So who you, who do you look to encourage you? You know, I, you know, I met some great people along the way that have been, um, you know, on top of the great coaches that I had mm-hmm. and 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 all that. Um, you know, <laughs> the guy that got me into coaching really, because he just kind of, it's like I said, when I first started out, I didn't really know, like, is this something I want to do? I mean, is this, I don't know, I, you know. And I mean, I was a teaching assistant making $19,000 a year. That's all I made. Wow. That's it. $19,108 a year. And so, <clears throat> obviously, that's not, you can't sustain off that. So, um, and I was a teaching assistant for this guy named C.J. Davison. He's, he's still a good friend of mine. And he's like, man, why don't you come out and coach with us? You know, and I'm like, nah, man, I don't, I, I don't know. So he just came, he was just persistent. I was like, okay, you know. So I went out there and, of course, like I said, everything I tried, you know, I just found that I enjoyed. And so I had a blast that first year. I was like, man, this is awesome. You know, it's yeah. middle school football, you know. I think our stipend was like a thousand bucks. I mean, it was not, <laughs> you don't get, you're not doing it for the money. You're doing it. Sure. You're doing it because you want to help the kids and you're passionate and you're competitive and all these things. And so, <laughs> you know, that's that's what uh, 
you know, that's just kind of what started it. And he was one. Um, so I'll say CJ, um, my, I call her Nana Mary. Um, my mom's mom was a teacher. Um, so it kind of runs my bloodline too. And then my mom's dad was a headmaster mm. or a principal. It was a old Hickory Academy. It was in a, in Jackson, Tennessee. He was the headmaster there. And so it's, I've got a lot of it that runs in my family. Um, and then as far as I'll say Mike, you know, Mike Payne, my superintendent now, Randy Reisenhoover, my principal now, um, and then uh, a guy named Aaron Hushbeck, who's been, he's our junior high principal. Um, he's been a big, a really big mentor to me as well. So, you know, and <clears throat> once, once my life calms down a little bit, I'm probably, I'm going to go get my master's and I've got several hours towards it. I just, nice. life happened and it kind of yeah. had to time out a little bit, but uh, you know, and then maybe one day I get into, you know, uh, the admin side of things or, you know, whether that be athletic director or you know, who knows one day, yeah. you know, but now I want to get obviously my strength conditioning program, you know, really rolling here and, and, uh, you know, then we'll see what other challenges present themselves, you know, maybe on down the line. So I like that. Yeah. You have future aspirations to be an AD of a university or a strength coach at a university? You know, yeah. One day, I mean, I wouldn't, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that's, that's, um, you know, I'd, I'd love to be, you know, even if I was an assistant, I mean, I, you know, I'd love to work for Jerry Schmidt. Or, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, that would just be an absolute dream come true. I mean, that's, yeah. Um, but, you know, my daughter's four. I got to get her raised and, you know, give her her, her, you know, what she deserves, in my opinion, as mm -hmm. far as like, you know, and that's, and that's very demanding. And I'm not saying it's not possible. It is. It's just I want to, you know, get her kind of going along here before I start thinking about, you know, taking on something, something of that magnitude. But, um, yeah, you know, I'd say that's on the radar for sure. Something yeah. like that. Eventually. 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 So in a few years, coach Smith say, Hey, kind of opening for assistant coach Baker's about seven, eight years old. I mean, if it's Jerry <laughs> Schmidt calling like, Hey, it's, it's going to be a pretty like, where do I need to be? Cut? Yeah. When do I need to be there? Like type thing. Um, that's, that's, that, that's just something I don't think you say no to, right. you know, even if you called me, you know, here in just a minute, I'd be like, I think I can make that work. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, you know, just, I uh, just, uh, that, that'd be awesome. Cause like I said, you know, I was going, I was thinking about going to Missouri or TCU at the time. Cause that's just the, the guy that I was working for under at East central, um, He'd been at Colorado and Nebraska, mm. and he, you know, so he knew a ton of people, and yeah. so he was helping me, you know. Uh, shout out to Travis Roost, um, <laughs> but uh, but but, and and that's another mentor of mine too. I should I should uh, put him in him. He taught me, he taught me a lot. He gave me a great opportunity, uh, just to come learn. Yeah, you know, and he gave me a lot of responsibility when. Maybe I really didn't, right. you know, as I was real young. I mean, I was still a senior in college. I was finishing up my degree. Um, and then I stayed a year, a year after I graduated. Um, and I mean, there were teams I was responsible for. Now it was his program, but I was the one, you know, cause you got to think how many teams you got sure. on a campus and he can't, he can't be everywhere. So he's got to delegate. Right. And that's part of being a strength coach is you got to have good assistance and, and uh, that's something I hope to do at Vertigris too. I want to develop like an internship program with the kids if they have an interest in that. Like, like for example, our free safety this year is just, and he loves it, and that's what he wants to do now. Okay. And, it was, and these are the things you kind of live for, these little nuggets, if yeah. you will, um, as a coach. Um, so we – we had a rough start to the year. We were, you know, zero and three, all one, all one possession losses. We could easily have been three and zero. I mean, that was the story of our season and as far as football this year. But we know, you know, we 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 make the playoffs and we go to Barry Hill and they had a, you know, they had a, they had a pretty decent team this past year. And so we, uh, it's fourteen eight at half. You know, good game. Um, was it? Let's see, twenty one to. And then we threw a pick six on a screen pass. It, and anyway, it was kind of the end. But anyway, after we, we end up losing by like 16 or something. But after the game, um, this kid's parents come down. And I, I hadn't had the pleasure to meet them yet. 
face to face, but uh, they come find me on the field, and like, uh, and it's like his, the mom, I mean the whole sister, I mean the whole family, and they come to me like coach, and, it, and it's his dad. He's like, coach, I just want to shake your hand and say thank you, and I'm mm. like, for what? You know, he's like, well, you know, before you got here, you know, our son just didn't really have a path. Like he didn't really know what he wanted to do, um, and he just want he just loves you. And he just loves strength conditioning, and he he's passionate about it. And now he wants to pursue being a strength and conditioning coach, and and we just it makes us so happy as his parents because we can tell he's truly passionate yeah. about it, and that we think he'll be he'll be successful. And he he's a sponge. He asks me questions all the time, and you know, so it's stuff like that that you live for, Love you it, know, man. that you live for because you know, you know, like hopefully like back to my coach that changed the trajectory of my life you mm. know that's what i hope i can continue to give back and in, in you know the, all the years that i continue to do this you know yeah. so um and you know there's been several kids like i had a kid at rogers who he sent me i i wish i could pull it up and it'd probably make me tear up if i read it but um just a little he might have weighed a hundred pounds dripping wet when i started with him as an eighth grader, and he'd come into the weight room every day after school. His name's Isaac Arcee. And, I mean, if you could put his heart in it, I mean, it's just, <laughs> just the kid just would run through that wall for you ten yeah. times over. And um, just just coming over into the weight room, hey, coach, how do you do this? Hey, coach, can you, I mean, just, you know, and, and, like, I love that. Yeah. I tell the kids that all the time. I was like, I want you to ask me questions. Yeah. Like, that tells me that you're, like, I want you to do that. I mean, every day. And so, long story short, he ends up being our starting running back. Oh, wow. And running for, like, his junior year ran, I think he had 1,500 scrimmage yards, and his senior year he had, like, 1,800, and he's, like, five, God, Isaac's maybe 5'5". Five, five, Dang. 160 pounds, but he'll back squat 425. Um, Just a tank. Just <laughs> low center of gravity. He's like the... High school version of Quentin Griffin. Griffin yeah. yeah. Like just, you know, hiding behind, you know, and just, but could jump cut and then get vertical, like yeah. just hard to tackle, just, but just because for four straight years, that kid just chipped away. Mm. And one of my mottos in life is just stay chipping. I like it. Just stay chipping. Cause you've seen that, you know, where they're, yep. and one, one dude quits and the other one just stays chipping, yep. you know, and so, and he just is embod. He literally embodied that, and he ended up signing to go play college football. Man, and if you would have, if somebody you would have told you that when he was in eighth grade, you know, you'd been like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> no you know, way, like yeah. no way. Yeah. But it just goes to show you what once you get back to the battle of consistency, and the kid was as consistent as a heartbeat. So, yeah. and and now, I don't even know. If, I can't ever remember him missing a work ever anything. Wow, ever. That's impressive. You know, and now he's going on a full ride to play, you know, play football at 5'5". Five, five. You know, got the met, but he's good. But like I said, the kid is, he's one of the most relatively strong kids I'll probably ever see. Mm. Um, and just got the heart of an absolute straight warrior. That's great, straight man. straight warrior. So, you know, stuff like that. And, and then, like I said, when he signed his scholarship, the text message he sent me was just, mm. it was awesome. It was awesome. You so, probably still have it somewhere, don't oh, you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It did take me a minute to find it. It's in my phone, but it was just a novel of him. Just thank you, Coach, for wow. pouring into me like you did. You didn't have to just, you know, like, yep. and, and I, I don't need that, but, you know, because um, I, I, you know, but just tear it every once in a while is nice. Oh, yeah. 100%, man. So, that, I feel you on that. Yeah. What are a couple questions you wish people would ask Coach, but no one ever asked? My kids, you know, the kids at Vertigris are really, I mean, you know, hey, coach, how you doing? How's the, but they do that. Like, how's Baker? How, you know, like, mm. like that's, man, I've never really thought about that. That's a phenomenal question. I can't, nothing really coming to, because like, I mean, you know, I don't try to bring my personal life into, you know, work, you know, but they know I've been going through some things sure. this year because I've had to miss work, you know, with some things that haven't been ideal that I've had to miss for, you know, and, and, and they're still even, you know, like, understand that, and, you know, like, um, and, like, with me, like, 
I don't know, maybe this, like, hey, coach, how's your training going? You know, because, like, I'm big and, like, I got to lift. Like, I mm. I, I got to train. I got to – because you get the best version of me when I'm able to do that. Sure. And another great thing, you know, my plan period, second period every day. So I get from 9 to 10. And it works really well for me because I get there, I, I get there early pretty much every day. Especially next year, I will because um, my daughter's still in an in-home daycare where she can't get dropped off until seven thirty. So mm. that's presents, you know, I say challenges. Just I wish I could get to work earlier than I've been able to this year. Next year, I will because mm-hmm. I'll get to take her because she'll go to pre-K four. But she turned four in February. Um, but you know, I get from nine to ten every day, which is awesome. Because, you know, my previous, it was real, it, the previous school I was at, it was just real spotty when I'd have opportunities to. So it was, it was tough to, like, establish routine and, yeah. and all that, which, I'm, you know, you know as much as I do is crucial. Yeah. When you, you know, when you're talking about training and getting, you know, your food in and your, you know, and all that stuff. So, um, but I even have now, it's, you know, it's funny, I got one of my coaches from when I was in school, comes and works out with me second period. He's, he's, he's one of our administrators. And then some of our senior football players will come and train with me too. So it's turned into like this breakfast club, if yeah. you will, type, you know, type uh, deal, which is great for me yeah. because with my knee, after I tore my knee, I mean, I was told never, never, you know, heavy back squat, never do this, never, you know, can't do that again. You can't do this, can't do that. I'm just sitting there like, yeah, okay, whatever. Like, you know, because I was going to do it. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, you know, because, I, I mean, I know my body. I'm not saying I was doing it to be um, defiant sure. necessarily. I just, I know it works and I know it doesn't. And so, you know, I remember going back to Tony's office and, you know, which is here in Oklahoma City for my year after surgery. Like, hey, how's how are you doing? And my I was I was literally non weight bearing for almost a year. Oh wow! Like ten months. You know I did pee on crutch. Like it was it it was yeah. awful. And so um, my right leg shrunk smaller than my arm. Oh man! It atrophied so much that it was literally like I would put my arm next to my leg and it was my arm was bigger. Hmm. It was crazy. Yeah. And so anyway, I go back for that year appointment. You know and. I throw my legs, and it's his PA that's seeing me. And I throw my legs up there, and he goes, uh, he goes, what uh, the hell have you been doing? And I said, you want the truth or, uh, you know? He's like, well, yeah. And I'm like, pretty much everything y'all told me not to do, you know? And he's like, I knew you'd do that. And he's like, hold on just a second. He goes and gets Tony, which what normal for a checkup appointment. Sure. You know, you're not going to see the surgeon. Right. Or the main doctor. And so Tony comes in there and he goes, same thing. Eyes get real big, you know, and I'm just like, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to tell you guys. Like, he's like, well, obviously it worked, you know. <laughs> um, so, you know, and so then I had a second injury. So, you know, I told you I had two surgeries. Yeah. So I rock along there forever. I'm fine. Doing legs, killing it, like whatever. But I have no cartilage in there. I mean, they, well, I had a little bit left. I had a little bit left on the medial side. Mm. It's a big circle. They scraped out about 75% of it. Gone. See ya. So the only shock absorption I had left was on that medial side a little bit. So I just carried fluid out here on the right side all, all the time. Mm. And so, but I was still doing legs. I mean, still doing 500 plus pound squats and stuff that, you know, they thought there's no way in the world you'll do that ever again. And, uh, and you know, I dealt with it. I learned how to deal with the inflammation and <laughs> I mean, that's another thing you pass along to athletes, like how to deal with inflammation, like been through it and done yeah. that, like, unfortunately. So um, just out of nowhere, though, when I was at Rogers, um, I started just getting just bad, like more inflammation than normal. Mm-hmm. Like, and it was taking longer to go away. And I'm like, OK, something's not something's not right here. Yeah. So uh, I was like, well, I guess we're going to get checked out. So I did. And so. Um, Dr. Matal in Tulsa um, comes in and he goes, do you realize that you've torn your remaining meniscus in two different places? Like, you don't, you don't know that? <laughs> and I said, well, no, doc, that's why I'm here. Like, I, he's like, but you didn't feel that. Like, you don't know when that happened. I said, no, sir, I don't. Yeah. I, I, I'm sorry, but no. 
And he just, he was just baffled. Like, how do you, he's like, is your pain tolerance that high? And I was like, it's, it's pretty up there, doc. Yeah. Like, I'm not proud of it, but like, it, it's, you know, it's up there. Yeah. He's like, well, it's torn. And he goes, so mm-hmm. that's why you're having the inflammation. He said, so we're going to have to go in there and clean it out. And he goes, you got some, you got, you got some scar tissue. And he goes, it's, 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 he goes, but. Whoever did your ACL did one heck of a job, he said, <laughs> because that thing is solid. Yeah. I was like, all right. So anyway, I had the second surgery. It'll be three years ago this Christmas. Yeah. Damn. So, yeah. Man. What are you most proud of? My daughter. I mean, that one's easy. You know, next to that, I'd say family slash career. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I'm super family oriented. Um, I just don't have much left, unfortunately. I mean, all my grandparents are gone. My dad's gone. It's, you know, pretty much me, my mom, my brother, and that's it. You know, I got a, I got a best friend of him, you know, who I consider, you know, a brother that we've been best friends. We were 12. He moved from, so I went to Monte Casino until I was in sixth grade and then moved out to Vertigris. So, and then he moved from Middle Othian, Texas, <laughs> To Vertigris, uh, the same year, and so, um, and we bought ho- our parents bought houses like a mile down the road from one yeah. another. So we were just, I guess, destined to be best friends. But his name's Keith Sutherland, and he's, you know, he's he's he'll always be my, you know, my best friend. He'll always be there and have my back, and vice versa. So I, you know, he's he's part of the family as well. But you know, my circle's pretty small. Um, you know, I've got a lot of great friends, but as far as family, you know, it's it's getting, you know, it's getting down the line now, unfortunately. Yeah. So now it's up to me, and my brother, and you know, my mom turned sixty six. Uh, she'll probably kill me for saying that. Uh, <laughs> like three days ago. Um, love you, mom. Uh, so, uh, but no, she's she's awesome. She's she's you know, my dad. Dad was a great man, um, but my mom's just. She's tougher than tough, boy. Yeah. She is just. She's been. She's just, and you you couldn't make her. You, and she's just so inspirational to me in that way. Like, she's just so tough. Yeah. It um it never ceases to amaze me. Like she's just, you know. And both my parents were that way. Yeah. So it's like I don't know any different. Right. It's just you know yeah I might. I might gripe here and there or something. You know, I think we all do that from time to time, yeah. but I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to fold. I'm not just going to, mm not going to happen. Love it, man. How do you want to be remembered? You know, I just want to remember that I had a positive impact on the world, you know, on everybody around me. I hope I enhanced the people's lives around me. I hope I brought something to their lives, whether that's something I taught them or something I was able to do for them or um, inspire them or, um, you know, whatever. I want to be remembered as a good, a good man, just a good man that if, you know, if Matt said he's going to be there at what, or he, or he said that he was going to do this, that man, he did it. Yeah. And if Matt said he had your back, he had your back. Sure. You know, but I'm the same type of guy that if you cross me in the wrong way and you ruined my trust. Like, sorry about you. Yeah. I I didn't do it. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, have fun gaining it back and maybe you can, but it's going to take a while because, you know, as we all know, one of you know, trust can, can go in a heartbeat. takes a long time to get it. So true. But it can go like that. So true. Love it, man. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time, coach. 2024. Do you approve this podcast? I do. Love it, man. I do. My name's Wong Lam, and I definitely approve this podcast. I'm gonna stand, I won't be seated. I'm gonna hold my head up high and stay undefeated. If I need moments on this part, cause I'm American by the grace of my good God. American by the grace of my good God. American by the grace of my good God.